the Merseyside derby last night. What, what was your take on it? I I was quite fired up about watching it. So was I. Uh, so was I. And then later on, I thought. No, this doesn't come up to scratch. No, in, in compared that, that to was previous my, that ones. was that was my takeaway. Obviously, we don't have the expert opinion of an ex footballer in here to be able to com- contradict what we're saying. As no, nothing, never kicked a ball, people. But <laughs> I, I sat there with a great deal of expectation of a fire and brimstone um, derby, with obviously both sides having a backstory of needing to come with a decent outcome. Liverpool to try and rebuild what's going on with the. Uh, the, the, the unwinding of this man's magnificent team that Klopp has built, and yeah. Everton fighting for their lives. I, I have to say, uh, for 40 minutes, I, I thought it was a snooze fest. Mm. I didn't think the quality was there. I thought it was very low level. Now, I know that the back, the backstory that's been built up now is Liverpool have regained their poise. I, I have to say, they may well have regained their poise at the expense of a rather poor Everton team on the evening. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. and, and, and again, the observation was made by somebody out there that that looked like a Frank Lampard team. I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm not sure about that. But at, at the end of the day, you you know, you can't turn a sow's ear into a silk purse. And without a doubt, those Everton group of players aren't good enough to operate at a high level. They've just got to go with application, motivation, and determination. Mm. And I'm not sure they lacked that yesterday. They just weren't very good. Well, I mean, Liverpool, in finding flashes of their previous best, did enough to breeze past Everton in the end. That is about the sum total of it. I wanted to see a feisty Everton uh, under Sean Dyche, but we didn't see it. Klopp and Dyche said this afterwards. I don't think my English is good enough to find the right <laughs> words for that. It was very important um, and in the end just in time if you want. Um, so we, we needed a, a really good performance and we showed a really good performance. It, in a, in a, obviously a tough game, in a tough situation. So we, we, face a, we face an opponent who played an exceptional game against Arsenal. So we had to prove a point and we did that. Uh, the boys did that. It was a really good performance and we played exactly the game we, we, we wanted to play and not for one second apart from the set pieces the game Everton wanted to play and so that gave us um, the edge to be on the winning side tonight. Well, I don't remember getting too carried away last weekend. You know, uh, the players have taken a lot. They still have. There's still more to come. Um, it's, it's very difficult to fix everything overnight, you know, so we're, we're, we're happy with the way they've been working as a group, happy with the way they've been working on the training pitch. You know, to take three points out of them two games in a normal season, you go, OK, well, that can happen. Obviously, this one's got more importance locally, of course. But, you know, I don't think when I got in here, people think most people were looking at these two going, oh, they could come out of this with none. Um, you know, we've got three points. So it's a start point. And I said that last weekend. Tonight's just a reminder of the reality of the challenge. Uh, but it's a challenge that we're more than willing to take on. So that was Sean Dyche. Common uh, sense. A common sense after yep. Everton lost his game by two goals to nil. What we do know for the record, Chairman Bill Kenwright, Chief Exec Denise Barrett-Baxendale and Board Member Graham Sharp were in attendance at Anfield. Uh, boardroom uncertainty with both of these clubs kind of carries on. But in, in Klopp and Dyche, I mean, who's got the bigger rebuild in their hands? Klopp or Dyche? Well, they both got enormous rebuilds on their hands for different reasons. Liverpool's expectations are to win leagues and to compete in the Champions League and to be dominant in the division. Mm. Everton's challenge, Everton's expectation once upon a time was to have a very wealthy owner, whoever's money it may be, um, and and build a team that can compete at the top of the division. Now they've moved to a team that's trying to stay in the division. So they don't have a rebuild opportunity because they're not going to be able to replace players. They just have a, a re-energising via Sean Dyche. What you heard from Sean Dyche there was basic common sense. It's managing, it's room 101, you know, management by number. You know, we had two games that no one would have expected us to get any results out of. The fact of the matter, we got a result out of Arsenal. This is a swan song. It's not, you know, it's, it's one swallow doesn't make a summer, sorry. Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, I think he pragmatically manages the, the, the media interview afterwards and he'll be off looking at Leeds and Southampton mm. as the games that he must get points out of because I think those are next on the list of fixtures for Everton. And those are the games that he will see himself wanting his team to rise to the challenge. They got... They got remarkably lucky, and I don't mean lucky in terms of the application they put into the game, but they caught Arsenal in a situation where they weren't prepared for the intensity of the performance from Everton, they weren't prepared for the environment they were playing in, and they were poor themselves. So all of that provided a perfect storm for Everton. Everton were magnificent in their response. The problem with teams like Everton is that that magnificent one week does not translate into being magnificent every week. And tragically for them, they're going to have to have an element of that to get themselves out of the hole they've dug themselves into. Do you think they survive? 
Well, I think that Sean Dyche is the key component of yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, you know, he will drag these players. I watch some of those players out there. You can see the, the, the re-energising of Tarkowski. I've yet to see. I know they made a big production last week when Tarkowski talked to the camera about Dwight McNeil, but I didn't think much of Dwight McNeil last night. Um, and I think there's a few of them out there that, that that need to liven themselves up. I thought Connor Cody, I don't understand what he was doing for that for, for that second mm. goal. Mm. Um, and you look at some of the defending with Mikolenko for the first goal and you wonder, and you look at Jordan Pickford as an international goalkeeper saying, I don't know what you were doing, waving planes down. Yeah, um, yeah. But all of that in mind, Deitch has the characteristics. I know they started to ridicule him with the beep test that he bleep test that he was doing at the beginning when he first walked through the door to evaluate how hard players are working. But he will get them into a space where they give themselves the very best version of a chance. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.